guys are getting uh, the dog and pony show from the sergeant, but they're not filming. They're just Jabberwockian. Uh, they're just happy to be here. But they don't have any more right than we do. Um, the police don't get to authorize who gets a constitutional right to film them. Judge Scalia said that the filming the police is enshrouded in the First Amendment and that there is no interference. So they can argue with the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Uh, it's really not up to uh, these, these douchebags to decide anything. That's why they're hired with low IQs. They're not really supposed to decide shit. Yeah, so I'm waving at the um, sergeant who's going to yabber job over there. Um, I think he's on salary. I think he's on my salary. I don't think these filmers are from town, so I don't think that they have any citizens' right. And this man's in cuffs here. Let's not forget why we're here. To protect and serve each other. Because we don't really need police if we can protect and serve each other properly. It's actually an expense that we could do without. And obviously we can't trust them with the authority we've given them because they're going to make random veiled threats of intimidation, violence, and, and kidnapping, uh, which are all felonies. Maybe intimidation is a misdemeanor, but the kidnapping, assault are felonies. So that's what they're doing, threatening me for having a camera for defending the homeless. They're threatening to, uh, to, to do felonies against me, yet they weren't doing felonies against these camera guys over here. Oh, they got his bags. Looks like they are going to arrest him. Because they're going to take this man's bags, his belongings. Maybe the, all the stuff this gentleman owns. He may not have a, a dump space to, like, do any of that stuff. So now, so they moved, so they want me to reestablish the 15-foot imaginary zone, uh, the real one, or they want me to keep this zone, which is more like 30 feet again. Because it's about equidistant from where we were in a V. And this guy's going to explain some kind of crap. It's the law. Deal with it. Either respect the law or you're not an oath keeper. So I, I don't get to talk directly to Sergeant. I have to get the uh, explano explanoid there first. Hey, how you doing? Good, yeah, how are you? Good. What's your name? My name's Julian. What's your name? Julian, I'm Brett Bailey. What's your what's your number? What number is your ID number? 3350. So I guess um the officer over there explained what happened? No. 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 Okay, so I was filming and there was a film crew over here with a boom mic and a big ass camera. And I was standing over here in the bit next to the barricades where I wouldn't be in the way and be injured. And um they kept the uh I think that gentleman came towards me and basically made a veiled threat that he tried to give me a lawful command about the First Amendment, which the First Amendment's not its own. And then the other officer also apparently uh, sent him over to tell me that I needed to get back. And he was trying to explain the First Amendment a second ago, or explain why that I'm a danger to them because you guys don't know my name. You guys should know who I am. Art knows me. The city knows me. I filmed the police. And I think we've met before somewhere. But the First Amendment's not his own. Uh, Officer DeWitt, um, about two or three weeks ago, a tall gentleman with like kind of a short haircut on top and shaved on the side, and does a downtown patrol. He said that now the new policy is within arm, or right outside of arm's reach. He said the new policy that's being disseminated down that you guys just don't know about yet. Okay. But the homeless are very vulnerable. And any time I see the homeless, being detained by the police, I'm going to film, and I shouldn't be any different than your cops because yeah. yeah. I can't get audio if I'm being told 30 feet is 15 feet under threat of, a, of violating the law. You know what I'm okay. saying? Sure. Well, one one thing that you might want to consider this moment. This, I understand. Okay. Right. I understand. Okay. Um, yeah, you and I, you and I actually know each other pretty yeah. well. Yeah. You just don't recognize me because I just promoted the sergeant. Okay. I'm okay. Detective Bailey from Homicide. Okay, okay, good. good. Yeah, I talked to yeah him we met on right. Barton Springs, right. then we talked on the phone and so forth. Right. And I, I told you before I had trauma. Sure. Okay. Yeah, and I, Julian, I think I, I you and I have I, don't I don't think you it. and I have a very decent relationship. So the one thing I want to make sure is that that if you have any issues or whatever that they're addressed and that's that's fine. Um, one thing I want to point out to you, just hopefully it will make a little bit of difference is 
I don't think, based on what the officer told me, that they're that they're telling you to back up because they don't want you close to them while they're filming. Probably what it has to do with is they were here responding to a physical fight. Okay, and I'm not going to get into the details of all that, but sometimes they need to ask you to step back for your safety. At that so time, you don't. But I came in later, and they already had the gentleman detained, and I was just filming the conversation. He was already in cuffs. He was already under arrest. That gentleman. Right. So there was really no. It wasn't for my prevention. And I talked to a lot of police officers, mm -hmm. a lot more aggressive than maybe these cops, the ones on Sixth Street, like right. Griffin, right. some of the steroid cops. Some yeah. of the cops that glare at me and tell me they hate me and right. have assaulted me and tried to out have cops that have beat me up now right. uh, in the last week. So um, I've been hospitalized, basically. Well, in the ER twice, not hospitalized, whatever. And there's a fear of the camera from the bad cops. There's an immediate response to the fear of the camera. And there'll, there'll be people walking all around, but the cop will focus on me and the camera and be okay. mad and upset. Okay. So there's definitely, I, there's definitely a psychological problem, right. and there's definitely a policy problem. If we're told arm's length, we should be at arm's length, and if there's no, nothing going on, and my safety is, is my own personal safety, you know, you know what I'm saying? Here, here's, I'm here's, some, here's something else that you need to understand. Yeah. If I'm dealing with a guy as, as a part of this deal, and, and you are circ I am, regardless of arm's length or what, I am not going to let you circle behind me, okay? Just because I know who you are, Julian, just because, I mean, not all these officers do know who the, you are. The, what are the guys' names from cops? I don't know. I met right. one so of you don't one know them mine, either, right. but they're able to circle around. You guys haven't done background checks on them we either. Have. They're probably not even from in we town. Have. We have. From another they're both town. local. Yeah. We have done very extensive okay. background checks. I'm just checks saying, on. like, I, I'm just, sometimes y'all don't know other you're, people, you're, but it's the camera. You always want me to understand your side, but you're never willing to understand, to even try to understand my side. Have the police ever killed a member of your family in front of you? No. And you don't know no. what I'm talking about. I, I would, That's I, what I tell everybody, so, not just I'm so talk. sorry that you had to deal with that. We've we've talked about it in the past. We've been through this already. I wouldn't even be filming if it hadn't been for that. I wouldn't even be bothering you guys if it hadn't been for that. You, what, I was activated. Right. What what can I do to make you feel? I just want to know that. The, okay, I told the officers after they shot my dog, uh, Officer Walsh, and, and there's a bunch of officers. There ended up being 14 officers. A, I mean, a lieutenant and a sergeant there too. And I told them they need to deal with me with grace after this. That was it. Just deal with me with grace. And that doesn't mean give me arbitrary rules. Tell me 50, 30 feet is 15 feet. I can count. I know what 15 feet looks like. You know, it's always just like uh, who was it? Hall. A couple about like three or four weeks ago, he like started screaming at us on, on Congress and he called in a bunch of cops just because we were filming a stop. Me and a guy from Portland that has a nice camera like your cops guy. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and he was just losing his mind with authority because he didn't want us filming. And we had to go across the street. And I was here, I was here like two weeks ago and I was filming from the bank and there was something going on at the Kinko's. I wasn't even really across the corner across the street I was across the street and over mm -hmm. and an officer came all the way up there and got aggressive and came all at me and was wanting to know who I was you guys don't need to know who we are the constitution I is agree. clear I, about I that I agree with that we I, can film you guys and, and be with, and apparently now the new policy is going to be with arm's reach I don't like to be within arm's reach I like to be a little bit further but I like to get audio and I you hear all the noise in the highway I can't hear what's going on if there's intimidation, you know, you know, I'm doing accountability work. And but if something happens right, I put it on there online too. I put kudos to whoever, you know, helps like someone uh, who's in a car accident or someone that's out drunk and they don't go to jail, they go to EMS instead, um, which we're heading that way like Houston, we're heading that direction. Like those things I applaud because those are actually things that are necessary. The rest of it is very intrusive on a well, what I'd like to do is just get with these officers that were on the scene, specifically the officer. Now, the officer that was the African-American officer that yeah. was the one who said he asked you to back up. Yeah. Is that and correct? Told, and then he told the other guy with the bald head to come over, the bald white guy to come over. When I'm sitting in the yeah, he there. told him, and he came up to me and was challenging me and asking me my name and stuff. People don't need to know my name. Right. I mean, it's not that I'm scared of my name. I don't sure. have any warrants. Sure. I'm not wanted for right. anything. I actually right. have police officers going to court to testify to their defense because of the shooting of my gun. So I'm actually 
I'm actually the plaintiff, not the defendant, yeah. in my cases. So, um, so it, it's just that they're gonna, people are going to have to get comfortable. Um, with, the police need to get comfortable with cameras. There needs to be a policy set, and there needs to be apparently education to everyone to not get aggressive on filmers. Filmers have we've had us we've been beat up, we've been assaulted. I've been assaulted and arrested three times for film. Julie, three times. What I'd like to do is three I'd times. Like, I'd like just for doing right here for doing that. Isn't that crazy? What can I do for you, Julie? Make what? these guys not be so aggressive. Make make sure that these guys aren't beating people up. Make sure that they're not targeting the police like some of the, I mean, targeting the homeless in this area like some of the police were doing uh, in the past when I was hanging out with the homeless. You know there was groups. And one of them died, Shitty Smitty, Smith. Uh, Smith would take naps under the, under the bridge at Ben, uh, ben okay. White, and he would go and harass people and steal their belongings. And this still goes on, from what I understand. I, I'm, I'm, I write for the Challenger newspaper, remember? Um, so they take these belongings sometimes, wake people up, beat them up in, in the middle of sleep, take their belongings, their IDs, and everything, take them to a dumpster somewhere else, and then dump them off. And then those people don't have an ID, and the next time they get to tell ID. I'm going to have a... Uh, just a talk with the officers and let them know that you know you, you have a right to, to film and so forth. Uh, and was it me? Everybody has a right. It's not my special right because my suit is. It's everybody's special right. Sorry to interrupt, but I'm just. I don't feel special. I don't feel any above anybody else. I feel the citizens need to exercise their right. Yeah, the one, the one thing that I'm not going to compromise on or agree to do is to tell them that they have to let you get within arm's reach because that is not policy yet. Policy well, I, I now. will certainly see when it comes down. I will certainly address that. I always. I wasn't aware. Of it ever, shocked me. The right. only time I've ever been told like this and like that was like something bad was going to happen. I've looked at all the videos of everybody around the world. I was like, that's not right. But he told me he came and he said, yeah, that's the new policy. Just not everybody knows yet. But that's that's the new policy. Okay. Well, and I saw cops. I didn't know who they were. And I'm like, there's this badass film crew, so I should get as close as them. And I freaked the crap up. You know, I, I was well, you, cautious. You, you can't always get as close as them because they have had well, a background. Know they, were, they were with us. But I didn't know. Nobody that I think. So I'm like, there's this film crew. But, I but should be as close as this film But it's not your right to know everything that we have going on in our police cars. and. It's not y'all's right to know everything going on with my camera. It's the same difference, except for I, I, you guys I have a state I, statute protecting you. I have federal law. I obviously can't argue with you, Jim. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying You're to. not willing to un leave and listen to my ideas or listen to some of the explanations that I'm trying to I've give you. So, oh, No, I, I don't think you have because you haven't let me finish. Okay. I'm, I'm not even going to try anymore. If there's something else I can do for you other than letting these officers know that... that um, you know they need to they, they need to be more aware and more sensitive to, the, to anyone trying to film. Um, I'll take care of that. And Let them know that what they're doing is a felony, and they could end up creating a liability for themselves in the department. Anything else I can do for you, Julie? Um, no, just guys have a good night. And, you uh, too. Hopefully the homeless will be okay. Hopefully they won't be fighting. We're here protecting the homeless, so good. Yeah, yeah. I heard there was a fight. I walked yeah. up and asked him. I interviewed okay. people on the way. Be up. safe. Thank right, you. you too, uh, Detective Bailey, Sergeant Bailey. Um, I still don't know his name. But anyways. I knew I knew that cop. I just... He was out of uniform when I saw him. He was in, um... Not even, uh... He was just in street clothes trying to do undercover work to find, uh... This guy that was framed. Someone tried to kill him and then framed him. And he ran. And so now they got him on the fugitive list. And the guy was like known all over Austin through the homeless community, through the food not bombs, through all the all the activists and um, um, see my hands a little nervous. I'm not not too bad. The cops make me nervous. Anyway, so um, cops don't want to, you know, they want to like spout their bullshit rules, but they don't want to deal with the law. Like the law is the law is the law. They can't just make their shit up as they go along. They can't just, uh, you know, can't just make shit up and beat people up and harass people and steal their shit. Anyways, I've had about all the police confrontations for one night I want. 
there's more homeless over here. So the homeless are homeless because they have, don't have homes. If we don't like the homeless, we can provide a home for them. You know what I mean? Uh, that's called a solution. The police are not a solution. So they're having a powwow over there for me. You guys are going on YouTube. That's a lot of cops. Another unit over there. So we got one, two, three, four cops.